this time, we'd like to have anyone with public comment.
um, were dropped at one time. Um, really, in essence, these services need to be continual to be effective, um, or they're really not they're really not a service at all. Um, if you're if you're trash piled up for uh, several days, you would you deny that the trash is not there? Um, and you know, I mean, it's evidently there. Well, just because the animals aren't evidently in front of you doesn't mean that there's not a problem in Grant County. And if, if we you know, took them up to the courthouse and tied them up around the flagpole up there, you would see that there was a problem. It would be very evident to you at that time. Um, also, I have uh, a second question. It, are the residents of Grant County responsible for these animals? And I'm sure your answer would be, well, of course not. Uh, maybe just that those little that little group of people, those animal huggers from Florida or up north or whatever. Um, it's really the people. It's really the people that were born and raised here in Graham County that I see being sometimes the most compassionate. They're carrying around dog food in their cars to feed animals when they're coming home. Um, I, I had a situation where um, there were some puppies. There were seven puppies with a business owner. And this happens to businesses, I guess, because people think that they're more responsible. They say, well, I'll just drop these animals off at a business because I know they probably have the means to take care of them. Well, this business owner had seven puppies and didn't know what to do with them. And actually, only two of those puppies survived because he was on a curve. And, um, and a lot of those puppies were killed. And we just trapped, just a few days ago, trapped and took care of two of those dogs. And he tearfully handed me a $100 bill and said, whatever it takes, vet bill, whatever, please take care of these dogs. And those are the compassionate folks in Grand County. But um, you know, typically, counties provide the service as a normal part of their budget policy. Um, and so, I know the, the big question, you know, we just heard from Rebecca Garland, and I know the big thing is that we don't have the money. But even fam poor families budget for essential services. And I really feel and believe that this is the county's job. I know on the agenda for tonight, it says that um, we're going to address the, uh, the, the postcards that have been coming to you, Mr. Edwards. And, um, you know, maybe, that, maybe you don't like that idea. I mean, I, I know it's not popular because there's many, many people that have multiple dogs here in this county. So I can see how that may be an unpopular um, thing. But, you know, if you don't like it, please come up with an alternative to that. You know, we're just asking that, you know, that we have, that we have um, some, some alternatives. You know, I mean, you know, you can, you can come up with some, some thoughts. I mean, like why the TNT um, travel tourism is getting extra money now. They just doubled their uh, money, what they collect, in the city of Robbinsville. Why can't they kick in a little bit of money? You know, if we, if we started dropping off dogs, you know, we could put out APB and say, okay, take all your straight dogs to Snowbird Mountain Lodge. Well, all of a sudden, we, we would certainly have a problem there, I, I believe. You know, I mean, we, people have very few alternatives here. Um, you know, you could take dumpsters and put cat on one and dog on another. And, you know, we could, we could have people put them there. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, isn't there a more civilized way to handle this? Um, people actually are doing that in this county. And it is more humane than just ignoring the problem and just acting like it doesn't exist and letting these, these dogs starve. Most people, they would make that one phone call, but the, pe but people, you know, the people that want help, they don't have the expertise, they don't have the training, they don't have the transportation you know, to, to catch these dogs, to take care of these dogs. We don't, you know, what are we supposed to do? We just don't know what to do. So what we're really, you know, when you say you don't have enough money, I really believe that we're saying we just don't care enough. Um, is this a problem? No, it is a lack of essential services that are not being provided. And is this a res responsibility of Graham County residents? No, we are willing to come alongside you, but we are asking you to take the first move, make the first move, take the first steps in this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
Thank you, Pastor. Nikki Brand. Did I get that right? Brand? Hi. Is it, is it just Brand? Branch. Branch, I'm sorry. This is my well, first time. I've been here six years, but I've never been to a meeting. But I'm just like her. Uh, I, all my life, ever since I've had a driver's license, I've carried dog food in my car. And in fact, I was in the Gastonia, they took a picture of me outside on the side of the road because when I go to work, there were puppies that were set out and they was living in a drainage ditch. And I pull over every day before I went to work in the field. Well, the Gaston Gazette found out about it. They came out to the picture and they feed these dogs. Well, I don't like to stir up, you know, the more you stir, the worse it stinks. But it can really get really stinky up here. Because I've been here six years. I was married to a man up here in 1964. So I've not just flew in here, you know. But the thing of it is that I've got such a, a feeling for these poor animals. The kids speak. I mean, I've seen so much torture in, in, in the, the other day, uh, a dog, uh, one of the women that I had met for this, uh, she saw a dog get the dump, she went back, she pulled in, and the police come up there, and they picked that dog up because he couldn't walk any further. And he put him in the back of her car. She took him to the uh, North Ark and uh, veterinarian, and he said, well, more daily than dead. He couldn't even eat anymore. He didn't know how to eat. So she spent three hundred some dollars herself to get that dog to live. And now she's got eleven animals instead of ten because he weighs a hundred pounds now because he's a master instead of a random kid or whatever the people like up here. But the thing of it is, is I mean, we <coughs> human beings, we got feelings. I mean, I know some of us don't care about animals as much as others. And I know people say there's bigger problems in Robbinsville, and I know them. But these animals, they can tell that the Lord put them down here. Uh, some of us don't have nothing but a dog as our friend. And I mean, that's all we have. And these little animals cannot help that these people are irresponsible and let them breathe through the breed. And just let them starve out in the front yard or backyard or whatever. And then when you complain about it, Somebody says there's no dog ordinance or no animal ordinance or no this or no that and everything like that. Well, what does it take? Does it take uh, call, call it Senator Davis, call it Channel 13 News, call it Betty White that's on TV, animal rights advocate? What do we need to do to do, to do something? Just that like, they, like Senator Davis and Secretary told me over the phone, it takes only one voice get the ball rolling, and you're it. And so I might be that one voice, and I might not be. There's some right here just like me feeling the same way, and there's some right here probably hate every word I say, but I'm going to say it. And if you don't like it, that's too bad. If you like it, I, I play it. You know, and I don't know how to do anything except what I'm doing, feeding them. They won't let me take any animals where I live because I'm a senior, and I can only have one pen. And I paid $200 to keep it. And that's it. They will not make me bring any more in, or I probably have to play for running over with dogs and cats. But it's pitiful because it's not only setting them out at the dump, it's leaving them up in the woods. When the hunters go up our hunt, I've heard that they leave the one that won't hunt to starve or either stomp his brains out or shoot him or walk, drive off and leave him to starve. And I mean, there's horror stories and horror stories. And I know y'all got more power than I do. I'm just one woman. And y'all got a lot more power than I got. And I know you do. And the thing of it is that I want us to figure out the way, if it's just a little step. Okay, I was reading in the paper about six years ago, $10,000 a year. Well, the man, I went down there all the time and took a dog to somebody let out. He only waited one hour. Now, how, now, who is going to take $18? One lady mentioned $18 came to her yard one time. How is she going to round up $18, put them in her car, and get down there in an hour and put them in that, in that car? How is she going to do that? She can't. She, don't know, she can't do that. But we 
want to do something because, you know, like that child, I called the police two weeks before that little boy was attacked by the pit bulls. And I told them that was a danger to the school. If the child wanted off that school ground and got those kids, those, those dogs would kill them. Two weeks later, the whole, the whole family was attacked. And so the thing of it is, if you don't heed the warning, it will happen. And, you know, we've got, we've got animals that we're afraid to do something with because we don't know if it's got rabies. But we do want to help him. And, I mean, that woman took a lot of courage to pick up that dog and put it in the back of her car not knowing whether she might get rabies from that dog. But she done it. That little woman took the courage to take that dog and take it to save his life. And then, you know, I just think it's, I don't know what y'all think of me up here running my mouth like this. This is my first time. I'm just telling it like it is. I don't cut them, I don't cut them slack, I don't make it down to goody goody two shoes or poor pitiful turtle or whatever. All I do is I say it like it is. We've got to do something. If we don't want any animals, let's just ban animals as far as we You're not allowed to have a pet. You have to go live someplace else. You're not allowed, you can't have a pet. If you have a pet, you'll be locked up. That way we save money. We won't have to spend any money. How about that? Does that sound like a good idea? I wonder how many people would let you come in their house and take your dog. There'd be more people killed than there would be animals. I think that we can do something about this. I was thinking, okay, $10,000 a year, six years ago, that $60,000, where did that $60,000 go? Okay, we could have got some old beat up truck, got some dog kids and throw them on there, got a man giving minimum wage. Then he go around every time he sees one, throw it on there. Take it wherever they'll take it. Or take it and gas it. I'd rather put them down and let them starve them. It's, it's horrible to see an animal starve to death in front of you. And you go in your house and eat meal set back or whatever. And you know that animal is out there another day going by. And nobody's passing, just passing by. And I'm just standing here waiting. I can't speak. I can't say nothing. Somebody to look. And you know, I, I just think to myself, I mean, there, there's got to be way we could build a little shelter. I mean, a you know, <coughs> gas company, they had a gas building. And what they did every day, they took them out there, even if they, they didn't want to, they gas so I many every day that they could only keep on their gas. Okay, so they had to build one of them. And they just take them down there and put them down. It's better than letting them starve. That's all I got to say. I know you are. Thank you, French. I would now recognize Jerry Dor. Yeah. 
problem with Gentle One. I don't think that, you know, that should be an issue. Um, I think if it was all done together or something joint like that, um, it would help provide a solution for all three counties. Now, you've got Tri-County Community College having that, like, Tri-County Animal Shelter and then maybe set up something so that you've got a part-time officer that is for animal control because it's my understanding that as of January 2010, all counties were supposed to have somebody designated as that person uh, by state law. I don't know if they have done anything here regarding that, but in order to provide a solution, um, to have something like that, and then the county, the, the county control person could set up every Wednesday, or like they used to do here. <laughs> Meet down at Eagles, you have a stray that you, you can hold on to for a couple days, bring them down Eagles, and the control officer can take them down to the shelter. So that might be something that you can look into. In the meantime, Logan's run has been very helpful. They had another one of my dogs, they took up one of the strays that took up to Connecticut. Um, and I would suggest too that you can, there's some programs out there where they're having the inmates, training the inmates to train the dogs to be not only uh, companion animals, but uh, guide animals. And that gets into some, some funds that you can get reimbursed for also. And there's different model programs like that already established you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Just look into adding it, putting that together. It just takes somebody sitting down and getting a proposal together. So that might be something that y'all can look into. In the meantime, I'm still dealing with the strays I got. Thank you. Mr. Yes. Uh, I would I would ask you to please with that format. And uh, the, the purpose of that is, is that I, I think that you look beyond our guidelines. And I, I just say that because it's the only way we've been able to accomplish a lot of things in, in the West. So all, all set aside, I would really appreciate it personally. And uh, I'll be talking to the town manager and other board members with regard to something in that nature. Um, you're talking about the passage of an ordinance is what folks are talking about here. And that's a long drawn out process and, and in that way to have, to have an ordinance in it, it'd be very difficult. I'm just going to tell you, uh, my, my plans, and it's not politically motivated in any way, I, I will not be running again for a town commission. My, my, I've, I've heard this and I, I know a lot of folks that have their animals and I understand the passion that you have, but I've said that Jason for and I don't want to sound keen. But if you would write those things down, and if we have a post, it started to mention, you said Cherokee, you said Clay, you said Brown, but it's Swank County as well. So, you know, with that, if there's a solution that's going to work for everybody in the region, then that plan will work out. Another thing in my mind is, you know, where, where, where is the organization in our community to possibly have a nonprofit? Uh, and then, you know, it, it seems that all of a sudden every straight dog becomes my responsibility. And I understand where you're coming from. And I'm, I'm appreciative that you come out tonight and, 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 and present this. And, but I would really like to do that. If you can do that for me, and I will, I will work with our county manager and the board and with the other, other, other counties. I have the ability to talk with them in a forum uh, that, that we're a member of as, as uh, counties in the West. So uh, if you do that for me, I would, I would appreciate it. Is there a problem? Would you like it? by the next meeting? No, do it tomorrow. Give me an email right now. Okay. Give the county manager to you. My three folks, she's still in. We had a private organization here for years right. during County Friends Animal, and right. that was, we raised a lot of money and a lot of money from all over the country. But what was happening, the biggest problem is with spay and neuter, and that's what right. we're, the barn doors open now we got to shut it and make sure that we don't get a bunch more puppies and kitties. So rounding up all the strays is just, that's like putting a, a band-aid. Um, private organizations work okay, but what we are finding is that one family would spay and neuter 
15 animals in a year. Well, in a lifetime, you should maybe spay and neuter four or five animals max, not 15 in a year. So somehow they got the impression that Friends of the Animals was a federally funded, so it's free. And it was free. We didn't charge people. Right. But you don't just keep breeding. I mean, right. that's just good. common sense would dictate that. Excellent. So we've tried uh, Friends of the Animals and the private organization. And I know Logan runs doing a lot. There's a lot of organizations. I tell people, bring them over to Waynesville. Sergeants will take the animals. But I do feel for people to get animals dropped. Right. I mean, we had a call from United Community. They had a lab over there. And I'm like, no, no, I don't want another dog. Yeah. So, but it's the spay and neuter that needs to get started, no matter what. And I, you know, I don't and, know how you do that. That's that another uh, issue there too, Joan. Is the is about the housing. You know, that's something that you know I can see that if we did have a, a government, uh, and there's that word again. But you know, if we could work together as counties and had a facility that could be centrally located somewhere in that region is that, you know, then we could look at it from the standpoint of budget. I, you know, I, I, I'm past poor mouthing for Grand County anymore. I mean, the issue is to do with what we have. And if there's a way to work this out, I, I'll, I'll talk to the adjoining counties. I'll ask for good. But you're, you're right. Uh, I've understood the last time you were here, you said that the veterinarian here, uh, whoever that is, I don't, I don't know how many vets we have, is not doing that anymore, you know, to have a clinic. I remember back in the day there at Sawyer's Market, at the market out there, Sawyer's, uh, they used to have those days and the place was packed. People were bringing their animals for vaccinations. Uh, they were there to schedule a uh, spay and neuter. So I know the day and I know it's past, but I think this right here, this door is, is shared, it is, because it, it, it's not that I don't care. It's not that I don't have, I don't have a solution. And, and the issue is, is that we could possibly do that. Instead of one, having to, everybody Five, four counties all trying to do the same thing. Uh, why not cross the boundaries and try to do that? Yeah. I just wanted to, to make this comment too. Um, I've spent some time in the last week or so speaking with board members for Valley River Humane Society, um, former board members, uh, and I think tonight they're actually going before the Cherokee County Board of Commissioners for a new funding proposal. And I, you know, I, I asked them, I said, you know, whatever you're proposing to Cherokee County, you know, put it on the table with Graham County. You know, I mean, I want y'all to know that I'm an animal lover too. Uh, I get up there and I talk about the finances. I just tell the truth. Uh, but my animals are rescued. Um, I don't do the breeding thing. I just take them off the side of the road just like you guys do. Um, but what we're trying to accomplish in talking with the Humane Society is to get some type of a funding structure in place that makes sense. And I think what happened in Cherokee County, what happened in Graham County with it was the contract went dead like in 08, 09. And, um, and both of those board members acknowledged to me that the $10,000 that was was not over. Um, the contract, we haven't been able to, to, to get a copy of what they received as a contract at that point. Um, but I said, you know, let's, let's go back to the table and see where we're at, um, just so that I can take it to my board. And if, if the regional approach is the better way, you know, I'm all, we're all for it, or, or, you know, we're hoping that we can negotiate something that will allow the Humane Society to do what their mission is, um, but that's affordable for the counties as well. So it's on the table, I want to assure you, as finance officer, I don't sit here and go, oh my goodness, you know, who cares about the animals? It's, it's what can we work out that's workable, that doesn't, you know, that allows us to do what we need to do in our mission as a government, as well as deal with these issues that are out there on the table for the community. So it's we're working on it. From the finance. Because Valley River's in place, but they yes. are, and that's really our solution is Valley River Humane Society. If we can get a good relationship for a while, there if you were from Graham County, they'd watch you leave the property. You were not allowed to leave the family. There was such for whatever reason. Right. I, I want you all to know, it's just like that you said, I, 
you know, whenever this discussion first came up, I reached out to all the counties. And you're right, there's a lack of services in all the surrounding counties. Uh, with, you know, in regards to, to Valley River, you know, we have extended multiple times. Let's sit down, let's talk about it. Show me where, if, if Graham County owes a debt, and we can validate that debt, we will pay that debt. And I have not been able to get that. And we, you know, we're trying to go beyond that. We have requested multiple times, hey, let's sit down, show us a contract, show us a way that we can, can try and make this work. And I'm left with no response, other than a few weeks later, I'll get another request saying, hey, what about our money post? And I say, well, listen, we've got to work on this together. Show me where I owe it. And, you know, because we have a documentation. We are willing, we've reached out. We're trying to make it work, and perhaps you're exactly right, this morning. Perhaps we have to look aside of what the only shelter is that can accept uh, possible you know, utilization of animals, which is not a river, and try to build our own and have a regional approach. Uh, it's something I think other counties would be willing to uh, entertain. And, and really, you know, I, I believe there are enough folks here tonight that we have that representation. I know that you have a hard enough for that. And one of the things that I make an assumption about in the city here too is about the issue of adoption, as as for as a, you know, not to euthanize every animal that comes to the door. And uh, so that that's in the offering. And I'm glad to hear Becky said it. I wasn't aware of that until Becky said it. So it seems that there are some inroads fixing to start with that. But still, I, I would really appreciate uh, what you said uh, about putting that in a written format for me to remember and, uh, and have had a conversation. And uh, because just because of what I do as commissioner here, I have opportunity to meet with those other folks uh, on the government boards and surrounding counties. And, and I'm not a bit bashful. Yes? In the meantime, can we start looking, and I don't know, and I certainly don't know what it takes to do an ordinance, but if I have a dog, you charge me $25 a year, and I make sure it has rabies tags. It's a tax. And if you have 10 hunting animals, and we call you a kennel, and it's a flat rate fee of $50, I don't know how, I mean, that's a charge, and I know people aren't happy with that, but the people that have one animal shouldn't be paying for people who have 10, and it's going to keep the people that live three doors down from me from keep having puppy after they like their puppies. So they have puppy after puppy. If they had to pay for that puppy, they would have some it. I do think this is all great to put together a shelter. We've got to have stop having so many puppies and kittens. And we got to have it. And it, the only way you do it is to charge people for it. That's what other counties do. That's what other cities do. And it will get to the point where there won't be any there won't be any animals to adopt out, which is where we want to be. Right. You know? Well, you've got me in a disadvantage, but not as versed in this as a, as a character rescue. Unit. I was raised in a military family, and you know about that. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't keep an animal because we had to move all the time. But the issue in this is, I think we have some inroads started, and you're asking us to, uh, as a board, to look at the passage of an ordinance. And uh, that would have to be very uh, carefully crafted not to the standpoint that we just go, you know, it's difficult to put something in place. And, and please don't take this the wrong way. It's kind of like, you know, I've heard the same argument. Well, I have to pay for that darn school tax over there, and I don't have a kid one. I've heard that all my life. But, you know, the same point of the matter of it is these kids show up in your yard. Not your kids, dogs. See, I've got mom's <laughs> But you hear what I'm saying. And, and that's the way it is. But we can look to the process of ordinance. We can look to the, you know, to research it. But I'll tell you right now, the, the faction of our hunters in this county are not going to be approved, approving of that. I mean, I know. I know that's just it. And there's a lot of things that we have to do that not everybody's going to approve. Uh, so try to do the best we can. And I hope you're seeing that, that we're not sitting here just old being whatever. You know, it, it needs to be done in, in a way that's going to be, be beneficial for the community. So that I want to make that approach right there. But as for your question about an ordinance, we can study to see how that is and study others that are around us and see what that's about, John. Thank you. Let me ask you people one simple question. Where is the money going to come from? It will pay for itself. Once you get it going the first year, it will pay for itself. It's been shown in county after county, and you're creating a job. 
So if, if you go on and Google it, we've had, and I, just, I don't know if I can talk here, my name is Lynn Kinley and I'm um, with this whole thing and I do business in town here. It's very hard as a business, people coming from out of town, to say, why are there strays running against it along your car as I try to sell them property? Um, they come from counties that have all these ordinances. They come from places that you can't, it is a hard time. So the first year, I think you've heard people say, we'll raise money, we'll find it to have somebody there. By the second year, if you put laws in place, we will have the money. Because if I'm charged, I have a dog. They all have dogs. All, every one of us are going to be charged sitting right here. If you, you, you show me the money and I'll dance with you. If you and make you the know. law, we'll get the money for the first year. And you and okay. Okay. <laughs> you got a deal. You make the law, you pass it that we put this in here, we will get the money to fund that position for a year. And then it should be funded because if the person doing that job isn't going out and doing it correctly, they should be, there's, you set it up like everybody else. There's taxes on things. If you're breaking the law, you get charged a fine. The animal is taken away. There's, it's set up, and we're not new in this. We're just one of the counties that don't have it, and we need to get on board in order to do that. So it's, we're not recreating the wheel. There's lots of them out there to give an example of. And I think it hurt. We'll help that first year, make the law, change it, and we'll give you some, if you want it in writing, we'll find some information on how other towns do it, and then you've got something to go and say, here it is, this is what we need to do. No, we're not pushing it on you guys. We'll work together with you, but you got to you got to do the laws. That's the only way to be done, right? Literally, and uh, we we'll have to look at it. But, you know, Commissioner Holder, you know that's the point. We have had, I said it before, but we really had to watch our budget. And that's one point. But if we come in cooperative with somebody, but then it's stop pressing the issue locally about the issue ordinance. So I see it. I see it being coordinated somewhere or the other that we have to. But I want to talk to Swain. I want to talk to Clay. I want to talk to the chair. And, and the reservation, you know, <coughs> get them involved too. Yeah, I mean, you that's know, they know they have a problem also. Yeah. Well, I want to say this. I, I was surprised that there weren't, uh, there wasn't anybody here last month. But then you're here tonight, and, and you can take it for what's worth. I don't blow smoke. I uh, appreciate y'all being here because, uh, and really, this branch, you never feel like you're out of place here. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I hope that this has been that way. Uh, Anyway. And um, but, uh, we've got a lot from this tonight, and it's not been a waste of time for you or us. Well, I, 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 I'm a member of the ASPCA, right. and I contacted them and I told them about the bad problems that we have here. You know, no funds to do anything, they done anything. And they told me that they were going to send me some paperwork out about getting the grant. I don't know if they're going to do it or not, but they sent me a huge email about all the stuff that went into the paperwork, about getting a shelter started, whether it was, whether it was a humane or animal shelter, whether you want to name it, that there was a lot of things that you had to do before to start up a, a something like that. But to me, us mountain people out there work pretty well, we won't want to do anyway. We let people tell us what they think we can do, and then we go ahead and do what they want to do, but they get to tell us more than that. Well, so yeah. why can't you be able to do all something, and, and, and you know, and just, just it makes you feel good. It makes you feel so good. And I'll tell you one thing I have found out in 65 years. The more you do for something, the more you get back. And I have always got this to be true. The more you do, give me the way back to you. Don't keep keeping the females, and you'll never have to kill another one. 
Thank you very much. Um, we, we will be looking for this. And, uh, uh, but again, I'm going to kind of put the caps like this is we've heard that Valley River is already in place. We've heard the issue of exploring the issue of ordinance. Uh, we've heard the issue of working jointly with counties. And uh, Ms. Branch, you mentioning uh, the possibility of grants for counties making a request is a lot better than one. Um, we know that from experience, and maybe in the school system as well, you work together on it to get it done. We will make all effort we can. And I don't know if I can sign off on your deal. Thank you very much, but I hope you're very careful in that you pass it. It's kind of like building a <laughs> building, it and they will come. You know, that, that issue. So that's the way it is. Are there any other comments? Yes, ma'am. I didn't know that I'd be able to say anything now because I just came to the meeting, not because of the dog issue. I had no idea about that. But I wanted to mention to everyone that I've been back here in this county. I grew up here for a year now. And it's very embarrassing to me about the animal situation. It's so inhumane. And especially if you go to a hotel around here and there are dogs that are injured laying at the parking lot. And I witnessed that a couple weeks ago. So how do you build a business here if people from out of town are coming in and seeing this type of situation? But the biggest part of all to me is that it's it's so inhumane to treat animals in this way. And I understand everybody has their issues about they don't want to spend the money and so on, and that we're a poor county. But how do we get anything changed unless we do an ordinance, unless we take, we make the effort and we stick together and do something that's worthwhile and useful. And again, I appreciate you listening to me because I came here not for this reason, but I, I definitely am an animal captain. And uh, it's just very embarrassing to me to see these things going on. And I've picked up quite a few animals myself already. So it's, it is a problem to me, a big problem. Thank you. All right, what's your name, please, so we can get that in there. My name is Glenda Alexander. Glenda Alexander, thank you. Any other comments? Would you like everything written to you, like suggestions on how some of these things would be done? How do we get the money? How do we do that dance? Is that what you would do? That, that would always be available. That's what I've asked this door to do. And uh, I'll be happy to sit down with any of you anytime. Yeah. We can get that and, and start getting it going. I mean, if, I don't know how we go about a subcommittee or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how that works. We've got that. I don't think there's been much of that done here. Outside of advisory, now there's been a lot of action in it. But we'll look to that. We'll, we'll, we'll discover what we can do. Thank you. Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll move along with our agenda.